Namaste. I must start by admitting my twofold ignorance. The first is about the word workshop. I have never till date understood. I know work, I know shop, but I don't know workshop. <laughs> the first thing we learn in yoga is work seva. So I suppose uh, high time we should change the term from workshop to work seva because that is the path of yoga as we understand. When someone asked uh, Shirobindo that I want a mantra of initiation uh, when I come to Pondicherry, I want a mantra of initiation from the mother. And Shirobindo said, it's documented in the letter, the mother does not give a mantra, she gives work. So, <laughs> so work seva is the path. And the second ignorance, uh, it's not um, maybe some other term, but uh, how much ever we may speak about the yoga of Shirobindo, how much ever we may speak about the mother and Shirobindo, there will be always something which is uh, unknown. You know, as the great saint has said, Saat, I'll translate in English, Saat samand ki masikaro, lekhni sab banrai, dharti to kagat karo, harikun likhana jai. It's difficult even for Hindi speaking people to understand, so I must. <laughs> even if you make uh, an ink out of all the seven oceans, and if you use all the trees as pen, not by cutting them, but it's a metaphor, and um, you make the entire earth as paper, still all the qualities and manifestations of Hari cannot ever be expressed fully. So with this uh, basic uh, little bit of prelude, let me start again by narrating two experiences. Uh, experiences are not only some big visions and uh, auditions, they are there, but something else which is you see, yoga is in everyday life, so always there is something to learn and that makes life so beautiful. Uh, the moment we think, oh, I know it all, that means I have entered into the ditch of uh, ignorance. So, uh, for the first time, yesterday, I used uh, an equipment called a GPS. I know how it is used because wherever I go, everybody uses GPS. But uh, for a change, because uh, the driver who was carrying me didn't know or for some reason it was not working. So I said, okay, there is a new thing to learn. So I used the GPS. And I learned uh, two wonderful things about the GPS. And that, that's interesting about the yoga. So normally people say GPS is a wonderful guide. It will guide you and, uh, you know, it will take you through the best route, shortest route. Now all that is true. Uh, it is so true even of yogic life that the divine takes us through route. Sometimes you may think that is a better route. But you know that route is blocked, so we don't understand. So he takes us to another route. If we learn to trust him, so at times there was a uh, issue that ultimately he'll go to the same route as it. <laughs> Let's go by what the GPS is showing. But this is not what I learned. This is something which all of us are aware of. I learned something very interesting that before you apply the GPS, uh, before it starts getting activated, we must put in the direction where we want to go. So, uh, this may sound so um, uh, straight and normal, but we forget that any method of yoga, any technique which is supposed to act like a GPS will be useless if we don't know where we have to go. So, methods, techniques, processes are secondary to the aim of the yoga. Now, we may think aim is obvious, isn't it? No. Aim is something which is secret within our aspiration. I have seen that's the beauty of Shirobindo's yoga. That while everybody is on to Shirobindo's yoga, while no one seems to know what Shirobindo's yoga is, but it may be with different aims. And this aim sometimes is not even known to the seeker. Most of the time it is not known. In the beginning it is not known at all. But the divine knows. And that's the little word I had with uh, Acharya Maniji just before coming here that see how the divine prepares you he knows where he has to lead us God is leading man while man is misleading himself as Shurvinda says and we don't know but the real yoga begins when there is a aim conscious aim the aim is the aspiration with which we are approaching the divine the divine mother is one yet many sided in fact she is infinite 
I may approach her simply to get some protection and in my everyday life and she will grant that protection. All our life, if we approach with that faith and shraddha that she is there, she will take care of me, she will protect me, she will do that. Or I may approach the Divine Mother to be her servant and slave. If she accepts, because obviously there will be a sorting out process, <laughs> but if she accepts, then that is the path that through which she will take us. Or we may say that I just want to love you with all my being, then there will be a, another kind of path. Or if I want to know a seeker of knowledge, there will be yet another path. If I want to utterly become one with the Divine, there is a yet another path. Or if I want to completely forget myself and give completely, regardless of what you do with me, then there is yet another path. So, even though it is the same Divine Mother, yet depending on the secret aspiration, the paths change. That's why in this yoga, there is no imitation, no standardized technique, one for all. Because standardized techniques, ultimately, they, they are like democracy where uh, somebody wins but uh, actually speaking so many lose and nobody wins it's all very confusing <laughs> at the end of the day <laughs> so it's not a standardized technique so what is important is to be clear about the aspiration that's what the mother says when someone asked her 1929 will you tell us something about yoga she said what do you want the yoga for do you want the yoga for power do you want to help humanity do you want to become a yogi? That's the in thing nowadays. So anyone can add a word before and after. <laughs> and then she says, none of these motives indicate that one is ready for the path. So it starts on a very different ground altogether. So she says, do you want the yoga, the divine, not even yoga, the word yoga is a process. Do you want the Divine for the sake of the Divine? For the joy of the Divine? See, the word Bhakti is not about, uh, what is that, the Dhol Majira, jumping and singing. That's okay, that may be an expression of a deep feeling. But Bhakti, Bhaja, to take joy in the Divine. Then she says, has the Divine become the rays of the Yitri of your life? And its test is very simple. If somebody wakes us up in the middle of the night and says, just one thing you can keep, all the rest is going to crash. What would we want? Family, country, humanity, my own good perhaps. But what would we want that one thing? If that is the divine, as Sri Ramakrishna in one of his fables said, put the head of the disciple below in water and he says, Sir, you were supposed to teach me yoga. You are going to take away my life. He didn't say that. Mother says, you want to die? Die to your ego. He who is not ready to die is not ready for a new life. Because yoga is the oldest exchange offer. Give your old currency what is the old currency? We value so much. Power, ambition, I don't know what is money, physical, physical wife, children, what <laughs> currency. <laughs> People live for just that. My bacha. Bacha flies off and he says, Start a bye bye. Dad calls him and he says, Dad, I am too busy with a meeting where he is enjoying a party. Now, this is the old currency. I am not saying that old currency was valueless. <laughs> but it often is often like a discredited check on time's bank. So, when we give it to the divine, the old, he gives us the new currency. New currency is like the digital currency. <laughs> Original digital currency. It is not seen, not tangible, not visible. Yet, it is the thing which is instant. So, this is the currency of the divine. It's not that he will suddenly, you will see dhan dhane se bara or your child, all this. Okay. <laughs> but, the moment we become aware of the divine presence, 
I won't even say that we carry the divine presence in our heart. The divine presence carries us. Then we don't have to carry all these. So oh, my child will help me, my wife will help me, my son will help me. <laughs> oh, sorry, son and child all same. Okay, husband will help me. <laughs> all this is meaningless because the divine is there and all belongs to the divine. Not that yoga should be done with this idea. Oh, now I will have the you know, Prime Minister walking with me. <laughs> no, it's for the joy, for the love. So she says, first thing is, why do we want the yoga? So yoga can be done for very limited benefits. I want to be healthy. A lot of people practice yoga. Yoga for health of mind and body. Hey, yes, I may have a strong body and my I may have a brilliant mind. But that is... What do I put this brilliant mind and this healthy body, what use? One may have all the powers in the world, but of what use? So Ravana also did yoga, Hiranyakashup did yoga, Hiranyakashup did yoga, and we know where it led them to. But if yoga is done with the joy of service of the divine, for the sake of the divine, then we are on safe grounds. Otherwise, without the divine, nothing is secure. This is the first thing that, these are fundamentals of yoga. That if I have not put my goal, GPS is a useless machine. Goal is important. This may take time, but one has to be very clear. Nobody can tell. No one on world can tell us. We cannot read a book and say, this is my goal. This has to be felt deep inside. What is it that I want? And then we connect with the divine. Doesn't matter. It's not that this is low, higher. Each one. At this point, this may be what I believe. And it's fine. Start with the connection with the divine. That's how the Gita puts it. The four kinds of bhaktas. Arth. Artharthi. Then Jigyasu and Jnani. So there is a gradation. It's not that it is a table. Nothing is a table. Doesn't matter in any, whichever way we turn to the divine, as we take joy in the divine, the divine takes joy in us. So this is how the first lesson. The second lesson, which is equally important, when I came, reached here, and yesterday also I noticed it, that when I entered the bhavan in Al-Sur, so I thought, okay, I have arrived. I have arrived, actually, I know. So then suddenly I heard the GPS again telling me destination, something it was telling me left, right or wherever you have arrived. So I said, I know, <laughs> I don't need you. Now we must understand that there is a place for the path, the methods and the technique. And there is a path of no path. When we are in front of the divine, then again if we say, now that you are there, I must carry my daily pranayam practice. Please wait for me. <laughs> he will say, fool, <laughs> it is over. There is a, a very interesting story of Amal Kiran. So, mother would come and she would give meditation to some of these initial uh, people. And there would be some on the left, some on the right and somebody in front. So, these were people who were the left who represented the power aspect and right the knowledge aspect and so on and so forth. She had made this. There were specific places, not like anybody can go and sit anywhere. So, um, Amal Kiran, while everybody would close the eyes, mother of course would always keep her eyes open. Sometimes she closed the eyes not for meditation but because she had entered into worlds and it's it, sometimes with eyes open. And Amal Kiran would keep his eyes open and keep uh, looking at her. Sometimes he would even make some nice uh, sketches subsequently with lot of fun in it. He would see people with closed eyes and drooping. Uh, so A.B. Purani was a wrestler. So he made his uh, picture and wrote below, undermined by the super mind. So you know, there was a lot of joy. The approach to the divine is like that. It is not something very serious that I must stop smiling now uh, because on the contrary, it is ananda. We are going to the blissful and an increase in the natural joy of life. The divine is not a joyous nature. <laughs> yes, pleasures is a different thing. That too because this pleasure is the Again, old scheme of nature, buy one pleasure, get two pain-free. That is written in under small note. 
So that's why he said, no, no, wait, don't get into this shop. He's fooling you. It looks like a sale, but don't rush after this sale because you will get it cheap and you will repent later on, leisurely. So, but the offer of the divine is satat joy, the state of inner felicity and peace. Stesham sukham saswati netaresham. Stesham shantim saswati netaresham. These are the immediate gifts that are given when, when one turns to the divine. Immediately, like people give when they go for workshops, those <laughs> folders, no, in those typical uh, scientific and all those workshops, they'll give a folder. So when we go to the divine saying that I want work, <laughs> so <laughs> he does the shopping for us, <laughs> whatever we need, so he gives us a folder. So in that folder, the shop part is there, we don't have to shop, the divine gives whatever is needed. We open the folder, whatever is needed for the sadhana, for the yoga, is given to us. Once we are clear about the aspiration, whatever is needed, for every challenge, every difficulty, an equal amount of grace, measure by measure, mother's words, gram by gram, she has used the word, measure by measure, gram by gram, is given to us. And she has actually provided much before the actual challenge has come because she is the mother. So, when we, there is a point when practices, methods, discipline has a meaning. It's very good to have a time when I would sit and meditate. It's very important to have, say, six hours of work dedicated to the divine, all this. There is a time for smaran, there is a time like we had Sandhya Vandana at one point of time. All these are, they, they have a meaning. But there comes a time. When we are face to face with the Divine, so somebody asked Amal Kiran, why don't you close the eyes? He says, am I a fool? She is right there in front of me. You want me to go inside? So there is a, this yoga. Actually, it is true of all yoga. And, but why it is important to emphasize? Sometimes many of us mix up the means for the end. So there is often a great joy I've heard people Every morning I wake up, 4 o'clock, after a bath, I sit for meditation, I do my regular daily practices. Yes, very good. But why? Why am I doing this practice? Is it because it has been given to me by my parents? Is it because I have read it somewhere? Is it because of whatever reason? Why I am doing is most important element in the yoga. In fact, in the entire Indian Sanatan Dharma, you will see, if we have to have a jurisprudence based on Sanatan Dharma, we will see, action is less important, the motive is more important. Entire Sanatan Dharma jurisprudence is based on motive, not on action alone. What is that inner motive? And yoga also, it's the inner motive. We may sit before the divine, we may do meditation, but why we are doing it? So with this little background, what really is yoga all about? So Shivindu puts it beautifully, there should be three consenting parties. So three consenting parties are, in fact, originally there are two, in between a third person comes in. So two consenting parties are nature and God, everything is happening between them. So what is nature? Nature is trying to, she shelters like Parvati. Uma, sheltering the image of Shiva in her heart. She has never seen Shiva, but she loves him. So, several, these rishis, others, these sub-rishis, many of them come to Dhyan Bhatka, to, you know, oh, why do you want to marry Shiva? He sits on a bull, difficult life, you are going to have tough life. And at one point, she says one more word and <laughs> you had it. She doesn't know who Shiva is, but something within her makes her aware that, well, this is not Shiva. She has an image of Shiva. Till a point comes when Shiva manifests. So similarly, nature shelters the image of the unseen beloved, whom she doesn't quite know, but feels it, senses it. And she wants to build a home even before she has seen, she is trying to build home, she says, come. If I make a beautiful home, you will come. 
But before the divine comes, the gods must approve of this home. They are the managers. They must first say, yes, this is worthy of the master. That's the story in the Taitri Upanishad. So different forms were made by nature. And the gods, she looks up before she can meet the Lord. She is doing it for him, but she doesn't, you know, in her own way she is doing it. She asks the gods, is this okay? They say, no, no, no. Then man is created. And when the human form is built, they say, ah, this is it. We can work here. And since then, man has become the workshop. Oh, yes, workshop has a meaning here. Workshop of the gods. They work and they shop also. They are working within us to create a Deva Manav. Shurabindu comes later, Devya Manav. There is a difference between somebody with an idealized humanity. Very, very time we think, oh, I am doing all the works correctly. I never cheat anybody. I am an honest taxpayer. The only lie they say is that I never told a lie in my life to add. But anyways, so uh, everything is good. So I am already doing yoga. No, sir. It is still the gods working us to create an idealized humanity. I am talking of genuinely where people are actually leading an ideal life. So, Shubhidu speaks about these three kinds of life. One is the ordinary life where the gods have not yet started working. They see, okay, but the life is largely led in the animal uh, I don't want to use terms like Rakshasik and Asurik, but yes. So who is a Rakshasa who is living only to eat and devour? Who is an Asura? He is also living for that, but he has added his brilliant mind to it. So he is devising all methods. He is a postgraduate in Harvard University. But all this is to satisfy and fulfill his ambition, to aggrandize his ego. That becomes an Asura. So Rakshasa is under control of the Asura. Rakshasa is a glutton. He doesn't understand all this. Wherever he can, chino, japto, pades, devore, he divorce. His appetite is... There is a layer of humanity like that. Then the Asura adds to it, he will put it very nicely. Sir, I will do good to you. I have got this new iPhone in the... So then suddenly mind gets, ah, this is the new world which is coming. Sir, artificial intelligence, wonderful. See, times are changing. Without spiritual intelligence, without divine intelligence, if AI comes, it could be dangerous. We haven't learned the lesson of the Mahabharata. So, so this is how the Asura uses his mind, brilliant mind. Brilliant in the ordinary sense, not in the sense of the gods. There is a brilliance of the gods. But a brilliant mind, an intellectual mind, but turn toward the uses of ego aggrandizement. This is not ready for the yoga. That's why yoga is not something which is given to all. It's not a mass movement that there are one lakh people. They will come only for either Michael Jackson dance, thank God, God rest in peace, or those things. Yoga is a, in that sense, though it's a happy pursuit, but a job, but a serious, sincere pursuit because we are going to touch live wire and if you are not ready it may blow us up so there is a period of preparation mother was asked how to prepare myself for yoga she says become conscious of all the motives so to become conscious that itself is a you know journey so there is the asra then there is the animal okay that's nice still decent humanity which is busy taking self selfies and looking after I mean families all, all these emotions are there in, in animals very nice when we look at you know some of the way they look after their even the family it's something amazing but animals don't have a sense of nationality except in the jungle book comic that this jungle belongs to us and there is the king of the jungle <laughs> they are living for their family they keep their space they guard their children but they are nice cute most of them they will not go beyond. They're not like the Rasura and Rakshas are transgressing boundaries. So that is one kind of superman who should be the cautions when humanity tries to break free from itself into the higher type. It may take the Asuric route or the Deva route. Asuric route is dangerous. Humanity, because nature is trying to transgress. 
it is trying to build a mansion for the lord so in that process sometimes when humanity must break free from its limits because he is the limitless but the, the breaking free may take place along the lines of the asura that is one kind of supermanhood but a dangerous supermanhood but the right is the gods so then comes after this a uh, ordinary human life but a human life which is led by certain moral ethical religious rules it's a good life now the human being is becoming ready he is living according to the customs traditions he is something for himself family something for the nation something for god something he does that you know religious life follows all the dictates within the religion social life so this is a good life as long as i don't thrust my religion on others and force convert it's okay but after this starts the spiritual life now spiritual life starts with seeking one may be very religious very moral but not spiritual often the self righteous do not take the spiritual leap and shri ramakrishna explains it very beautifully and we see this in the dilemma of arjuna when you have uh, iron bonds you want to break them then you have a silver bangle it's nice but maybe i can have the gold one but when you have the gold one this is very nice nobody wants to exchange a gold bangle for something which you don't know what it would be so the self righteous the moral man religious man nice though they are it's very difficult sometime because then you you think this is the highest and that's what we have till now felt that there is the highest though beyond it there is an idealized humanity which is very few in india the term used was arya arya had nothing to do with north or south or east or west arya was a type of humanity the high idealized humanity which is living for dharma and dharma was intrinsic it is not a religious scripture so that was the arya up till this the work had been done yet that is not the ultimate so it collapses because even to live by dharma one has to you know because human beings are not uh, yet prepared to live by i'm talking of the true dharma not just the scriptural but the true dharma because it evolves as things evolve to change arjun had this dilemma is it dharma to kill my own kith and kin in a gori war for the sake of land this is dilemma he is a man who has lived by dharma yudhishthir has similar dilemma so there you shri krishna takes them into what really gahano uh, karmano gati and what really is the sukshma aspect of dharma but that's a different subject altogether then comes spiritual life so spiritual life begins when we want to go beyond the frames of humanness there is something greater which i don't know a greater wisdom a knowledge a truth which is the basis of everything the upanishad says that what does it mean when we read something from let's say satyena pantha vitato deviyana satyame vijayate nanritam what what is that truth which wins it is not just my court case for sure but there is some truth which wins and it is so true it has the last word what truth is being spoken of there so when there is a seeking for truth when there is a seeking for someone who is there everywhere whom i don't know so this whom i don't know is so important that's why the upanishad says so beautifully that if you have the thought of it you know it not because often we hear someone recently sent a question mother is everywhere then what happened to the train accident so i asked first of all is it your realization or is it you have read in a book so you see the difference between converting so that's how it is the old currency notes we have this it is truth in fact it is the sole truth to a spiritual person that the divine mother is everywhere but it has to be converted otherwise it's like a check <laughs> whose date you don't know you go to the bank and he has not encashed it so you can't carry check all the time see my dad has given me this check but he say yes but see carefully he has not signed it yet why he has not signed because you are not yet yogya for it you didn't notice he gave you the check and you were very happy that i am carrying a big inheritance you forgot in a hurry that he is a smart dad 
he has not signed it but giving the check is an assurance that he will sign it when you are ready so this is a little bit for all the parents <laughs> give the check <laughs> don't give the last signature <laughs> well that's just by the way so he is it's an assurance so in yoga too that if there is an aspiration it's an assurance already so aspiration is a promise that whatever has be aspire for has been granted very often people feel that uncertainty even if there is little faith still this aspiration cannot come by any external means that is why in india we don't have a system in sanatan dharma of converting from outside because this is meaningless true conversion is a conversion within and this conversion is that suddenly in a human being something opens up and he says no 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 he may be a happy person yoga is not pursued by uh, oh life is so uh, difficult dejected god will say first please please be happy ha huh? don't don't come with <laughs> okay we can go with a sad face he will give us comfort but yoga is done is a joy because it's the greatest pursuit who won't be happy being enrolled in a work which is the greatest it the greatest adventure in that spirit yoga has to be approached and then yes one is ready for 100 things which may come so once the aspiration is born actually she is the one who has lit the aspiration and if she has lit the aspiration that means now she has signed the check shubindu says then goal is sure it may take less time long time why because between the aspiration and the divine there is nature so we come back to these three consenting parties nature is trying to build a house with human beings there is a possibility that yes this house can house the lord but to house the lord human beings have to go through a process of evolution nine times i believe as the scientists tell us that humanity has been destroyed aborted then this homo sapiens erectus came into existence nine layers names are all there in biology cro-magnon neanderthal this man that man not iron man and spider man but all kinds of man before homo sapiens erectus before this it's homo sapiens but then man stands erect look at the symbol for the first time we can stand erect beneath the stars we can look up to the skies we can look straight in front not like the animals eyes on the sides this itself is a symbol beautiful symbol that's why the entire kundalini the it can rise and meet the lord through the sahasra so man has been created in such a way that he can house god so the purpose of yoga is to house the divine in this body this is the first step of yoga in a certain sense is there he is there as the veiled inhabitant as shobindu puts it he is an incognito of the imperishable he is inside and we want his identity card so we keep asking him are you krishna are you shiva are you this are you that and then we have an idea this is what shiva is this is what krishna is he doesn't carry such identity cards he is like the yaksha of ki nupnishad who comes unannounced on the threshold of her victory and none can find him except through the grace of the divine mother this is what we see in the story of yaksha many i'm sure everybody knows that finally indra goes and indra also cannot find him till he meets the divine mother uma hambati who says he is the eternal so that's why we see in this yoga it is through the mother because it is she out of whom nature has come and it is she out of whom the little guest inside para prakriti jeeva bhuta the psychic being that has come so now nature and god next comes on the stage man much later so all these theories that 
it is human mind that has created this it is human mind that is even people say all this is because of the human mind much before the human mind was had come or any mind had come there was a mind of matter if you want to put it but these are all fantastic jugglery of the mind human beings come much later on the stage but there is an immense importance because in human being they are still products of nature our mind life and body are created by material nature but there is something in us which is created not just by this material nature in our upward striving but by the divine mother the supreme super nature or the nature of the divine mama ishwaryam para prakriti and that is the psyche being so we are a double birth meaning thereby we will never feel settled <laughs> if we are too settled with inferior nature this fellow will keep prompting us no 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 see this not enough this not enough because he has the thirst for the infinite that is why death comes because uh, we thirst for the infinite and we little nature has made this finite form so we cannot be satisfied with finite because we are thirsting for the infinite so there is this at the same time if this awakens then to there is a problem because if this awakens then there is other problem and the problem is that this is not ready when psychic being awakens and sees the mind life body making a fool of each other then the psychic being also feels like that state of the teacher in the class who is putting her head and says i have so many beautiful ideas but my students are not willing to learn listen or anything they want to go do their life their own way or like more correctly speaker in not only indian lok sabha every lok sabha it just that we people have been very happy showing all those images uh, look at these european parliaments where they are literally fighting trying to throw each other everywhere because politics is like that <laughs> so this speaker is sitting the only fellow who hardly speaks <laughs> because the representatives of nature are speaking democracy the average and speaker is quite listening only sometimes is a order 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 up to when people can't listen he says adjourned sign die nice word so sometimes the psychic being says enough is enough sign die and it says i'm going up i'll come back take a new body have re elections have a better parliament so this journey goes on from life to life so the other great truth about yoga is that while yoga is to compress the evolution in one lifetime but but there is a saving grace arjun as very practical person thanks to him he says madha you are saying such fantastic things <laughs> for him it is the first time no, no interpreter <laughs> so he says but you know what it's difficult he says yes it's difficult but not impossible and then he says swalpa masya dharma say do a little bit of it that will liberate you from much fear then he asks a very interesting question he says what if i cannot nature may not consent you see that's the beauty now man has been created with two double nature there is on one side a part which is open to the divine supernature and there is another which is inferior nature inferior nature is like the mother in ignorance she wants to tie the child to the apron strings when the child grows up and says mama i want to go abroad and study na 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 gora mem ko le aayega and all that stuff you know she is afraid or he may never come back gora mem is only a fear ha huh? she doesn't want because she wants the child to stay near so in fear nature doesn't let go this like story of kartike kritikas they don't want the child to go and be given to shiva and parvati so we all have this double parentage one is the physical mental vital births and the other is the spiritual birth the spiritual birth was called in in ancient terms as dwij initiation so we didn't have baptism baptism is a meaningless thing you are born and you shubhendra puts it very uh, humorously <laughs> that <laughs> the priest muttered something and asked me some questions and he didn't reply he was a little baby child he didn't know what to reply and suddenly uh, he says oh he is saved he is saved <laughs> he puts it very humorously 
But true baptism is that a time comes when something, mother uses the word second birth, new birth. Second birth is literally there in the Sanatana Dharma. She uses the word new birth, dvejir, twice born. When we discover that, well, my uh, little mother, Diti, has formed mind, life, body to the best of her abilities. But there is now Aditi, she is my mother of all lives. And when we discover, then life changes. It grows beautiful. It does not mean discarding this mother. It means fulfilling this mother. So when a child goes away from the small home to gather wisdom, to gather wealth, as Shuddha says, travel abroad but come back to enrich your mother. Janani Janabhumi. So he enriches. She, she doesn't know that what are the other means because she is living still in the framework of the old house, the well water. She that's wonderful for her. So here also there is the double nature. One is of ignorance, which doesn't allow us to go. How does it not allow? Oh, don't go there. It is very dangerous, I have heard. So ignorance will tell us we don't know. All those who go to yoga, no, they become a little crazy. I'll show you to a psychiatrist. Better. No, no, do as others do. Heaven's call is rare, rare at the heart that he eats. Why? Because... Uh, you see, I don't know, you first do everything when you are retired. After 70, you pursue yoga, I will not stop you. You will not be there to stop. That's a different story altogether. <laughs> so, ignorance does not want to free mm -hmm. us. So, it tries every which way, doubt, despair, desires, the several days which will not allow us to go. How to go past them? By that one capital D, Divine. So to desire the Divine. Then all these slowly fade away. Because then he becomes everything. So desires, he is the fulfiller of desires for everything. Doubt, he is the one who will destroy these doubts. Despair, he is the one who will Vidyanti, Hridigranti, Shidyanti, Sarvasanshya. He will scatter this. So, human beings are meant to become the bridge between nature and the divine. These are the three consenting parties in any yoga. The human soul, which must seek the divine. If there is no seeking, any amount of effort practices have no meaning. We may sit in Padmasan or any asana or stand direct for five hours. And do this posture, that posture, bold state, 90 degree, whatever. Fasting, hungry. But without seeking, without aspiration, there is no yoga. It's not that these are bad things. Better to sit in Padmasan for two hours, than go out, hang out with those PUBG games. Much better. Keep, <laughs> keep you away from danger. But it's not yoga. Yoga begins with aspiration. So that is the human soul. There is no yoga without the divine. We may not use the word divine, but the greater self, whatever way. Otherwise, what are we doing yoga with? If there is no divine, then there is me and nature. That's the end of the story. That's how we see here in Western concepts certain idea that, well, people call God, it's nothing but nature because they cannot understand where does the ultimate impulsion in nature come from? This is a very fascinating subject. I don't want to get into it. What comes first? Will or the action? Psychologically we will say will, but many times we act without will. But people have studied, gone into studying the neurons. Where does the will reside? It is the will that will trigger the neuronal pathways. Many times we have lent our will to desires. This is the problem. So we have become automatons in the hands of desires and habits. But we can reclaim it back and say, no, no, no. I know you have not led me to the right places. Now I hand over my will to the divine. It is very simple. Picking up from here, putting it there. The moment we hand over our will to the divine, then the divine starts controlling the switches. And nature begins to run into those grooves. Again, it takes time. 
but the process at one level is as simple as that in any yoga it is this we have to take our allegiance from this nature to the divine transfer shubhendra used the word transfer of allegiance i owe my allegiance to the divine he is the one whom i must please he is the one whom i must make happy it doesn't matter somebody will be happy and happy any which way lead your whole life trying to make one person happy at the end the person will tell you you know what you missed out on this thing try to make a human being happy and see the results <laughs> anybody it's not about person a to b b to a equally except that there are some people who will see the good thing doesn't matter jaisa bhi tha theek tha okay by and large the fellow was okay but there will always be some spots this was not done this was not done whereas when you turn to the divine he picks up those parts which have been open that's how the mother works so this idea that i am fit and unfit have no meaning nobody is fit if one starts really looking at it like this what would make us fit none of our qualities sometimes even our qualities become a bandhan that's what happened to arjuna i am a good guy how can i you know touch my uh, grandfather in whose lap i have heard lullaby see so nobody by his own efforts are fit but what is the sign that one is ready is this aspiration that flame can be lit in various ways one of the methods is these kind of satsangs the whole idea of satsang is that it's like moving in the zone of fire one of the reasons why people come to places like this relics are there mother's presence is there why because one day maybe the log of wood will catch fire every day we are going mechanically going back to the home doing everything one day we say hurry i am going there why am i always in a hurry all the time in mind now from here i have to go there let me sit for some time and one goes back with a flame one day we are reading the books and they are very nice we are debating about it oh synthesis of yoga wonderful but this is difficult that is but one day we the pilgrim of staff of faith and the fire of will that's only two things are required in yoga to really start the journey shubhendra used the word pilgrim staff of faith and the torch of aspiration if these two are there one is destined to arrive more true than 2 plus 2 equals to 4 faith and aspiration and we go back to the great saying of the gita that as man approach me also man is his faith shraddhavan labhate as is our faith so we become i may be the worst person upon earth doesn't matter yet if i have the faith that no i can become that so every ratnakar has within him a valmiki just imagine what a story if faith is there i'll end up becoming what i have faith in that's why faith is such a precious treasure if aspiration is there i have to just persist it doesn't matter and this is so true anybody i'm sure many uh, almost everybody must have experienced things which seem so difficult seem impossible at some point they just vanish at some point often when as they say the night is thickest before the dawn and then suddenly it all collapses see this is the asuric maya it's called asuric illusion it makes the night seem impregnable look at these even fellows they lack the wisdom that's why krishna was on this side when ghatotkach comes maybe with this we could stop ghatotkach comes very strategically shri krishna has brought him into the war when at night why because at night the asuric maya is at its best that's why night is one has to be so careful the gita speaks about this with shobindo also says night is not just a metaphor even at night nishacharik shaktis morning you wake up with all gratitude beautiful nice but if at night and in sleep and in dream we can still maintain 
That is the sign that yoga is becoming really deep in within us. Supposing at night when we wake up and there is this ma 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 going on, then it's a sign that this has really gone deep. Otherwise, night is somnambulist as he describes. So, however thick the night, so so he brings Gatatkach. Look at these fools. They are fighting him. And ultimately, Krishna's strategy worked. What was his strategy? Compel Khan to use the Amog Shakti. So he had not given, first of all, to set the record straight. Kavach Kundal, just like that. Huh? He knew that he had a very good bargain, excellent bargain. Because three times before the Mahabharata war, actual war, he was defeated by Arjuna in real, real battles with the Gandharvas, with the Virat Yudh, and once uh, when, you know, chasing the army of... Three times he was defeated. So now he was like, this will defend him, but what can kill Arjuna? So he asked Indra, I will give you the Kavach Kundal, but will you give me your Amok Shakti? He says, yes, but you can use it only once. That Shakti has no uh, cart. Whoever he uses, it's deadly, amog, you just can't. So he had done the best bargain. He said, I will survive, but I can't kill this fellow. So he takes this Shakti and why he was not using it on anyone? Because he could use it only once. This was the kivit. So ultimately he uses it on Ghatotkach. Look at these jokers. They could have just said, okay, let the morning come. We can wait. We can wait. When morning comes, his powers will become less and less. Then we will see. Let's wait for another day. Of course, Ghatotkach had created havoc. <laughs> That's a different thing altogether. So, there are nights and dawns through which one has to pass. Yoga is not a, oh, from today, all will be wonderful. It will be wonderful, but in another way. And that yesterday I was saying, the wave rises up and the wave, wave goes down, then rises up and goes down. So is our life. There are beautiful moments when we rise into, ah, all is beautiful. Then we also come down. And much that we were rising on that crest crashes, we rise again and we fall again through cycles of birth and death. As Sri Krishna assures Arjun, nothing is lost. This cannot be lost. But through all this rise and fall, the waves are moving forward. Because it's impelled by the ocean energy. Waves rise and fall and rise and fall. But which direction they are moving? In one direction. That is forward. Once we remember this, that is the faith that is required in the yoga. It is not a faith dependent on outer circumstances. It's not a belief in a system. It's a faith that through all the rigors of the journey, the divine will hold me, holds me. And even if I cannot see him because it's dense night, he is there holding me through this journey. And then this aspiration which one has to safeguard. You see in ancient times wherever yajna was done, we will read in Ramayana, Tadaka and all these people will come and throw um, mass, meat, alcohol and God knows ha ha who all these, they will try to scare. So. These Rakshasas and Asuras, they don't allow this aspiration easily. So, they try to throw doubt. They will try to throw despair. They will try to throw various attractions. And for a while, one may completely get confused. What saves us that time is the correct direction on the GPS. The new thing that I learned was, put it, recenter. Wonderful word, I love this word. It didn't say re-enter, it said re-center. So you'd press re-center. I figured it out. Where am I lost? Somewhere I'm lost. <laughs> so I, I saw this little thing logo on the left side, re-center. I pressed it, again it comes, shows me where I am and which way to go. So the important element is to keep re-centering. First put the destination, then if one is lost, re-center. That means to remember the goal. At no point of time the goal should be lost. Then all will become wonderful. All will become a means to reach. All will become 
joyous because day or night figuratively metaphorically when we know that he is holding our hand what is this kurukshetra for arjuna when he knows that krishna is with me so this is the important faith and aspiration with which yoga begins okay so we'll take a break if you say yes